Yeah. Oh, yeah. It works now. So to explain why we need transformation, we're going to go through three points, where we come and where we stand now, what drive us, and at least to see what are the challenges of transformation and the principle at A1 itself. The first point, I think the most of you knows, A1 is a tele telecommunication company representing seven countries. But I, I just want to show some key uh, facts that had an uh, uh, effect to the actual situation on the AT landscape. We have uh, over 130 years history. So it's an old company, yeah, not older, but it was grounded a few it's years ago. Years. The first 100 years, there was no many changes on the technology, but in the last 30, 40 years, the increase of changes has increased rapidly. So there was a lot of changes on the network uh, technology, the emergence uh, of new innovations, of new key players have transformed completely the tel telecommunication uh, business. That results um, that even that we have even have uh, some changes on the corporate level. Um, in the 90s, we split the company in two companies. Ten years later, we merged the company again. In the meantime, we make some uh, strategic acquisition. The result is that by now, we have to, on the Austrian uh, A1 information technology, we have to deal with over 1,000 applications. So we have a complex IT landscape with different technology in place, with a lot of legacy system with a mix of make and buy uh, software. That means that too many front-ends and back-ends doing the same or a similar stuff. But this is not the only reason why we need transformation. So we come to the next point. Um, what drives us? The main driving factor is our customer and how we can empower in digital, his digital life. And the second one is revenue growth. Like, and how to achieve the revenue grow, grow is to improve e efficiency, introduce new technologies, and launch new products because the telecommunication business is changing. And we have to go to this personalization of the customer segment of one because we have a uh, customer of all ages and business areas with different uh, um, requirements and uh, expectations. Also, we are part of the group, so we have to reuse solutions all over the group and of course, increase uh, net promoter score. But within the IT, we also have some driving factors. We are changing the way of, of, of working. We are changing the way of, uh, in an agile way of working. We're introducing DevOps. We are ex making experimentation about artificial intelligence in operations. And we have a clear defined IT transformation roadmap for, for our system. And the fo focus for 2019, the main focus was to remain number one in Austria. It's the market, telecommunication market in Austria is a very competitive one. And for that, we, we have to reduce time to market, cost to market, to be able to uh, be competitive in this uh, market. And of course, to improve customers' experience and the also, main of the on the, on the network side was to introduce the 5G network technology in, in Austria. Um, to be able to achieve the most of those goals, we need transformation and also to be fit for the for the future. That means it comes to the last point of my presentation itself: is what are the changes? What are the principles that we have defined for that? Uh, we have to, uh, in the beginning I talk about 1,000 applications. The first bunch of that we have to merge in are about 20 applications that we have to merge. But I think the main challenge that we have is to find the balance between transformation and daily business. By now, we have 30 large transformation projects, and in one year, about 60 big uh, activities to, for revenue growth. So we cannot stop the one or the other one. And I just also want to put some other interesting key facts there. 
to explain the complexity of the landscape. The oldest application that is all, it's still in use is 40 years old. So it's, uh, it's a long time. We have some units that has to work with 60 applications to serve the customer. So it's very complicated. And we also have some regulatory reasons. We have to keep aging technology in place because we are not allowed to uh, disrupt. Um, to achieve this, these challenges, to, to be able to handle this, we define on the, on the architectural way some principles. Um, one of the success factors for that is we have to reduce complexity. We have to reduce complexity on the business process. We have to reduce complexity on the uh, product portfolio and, of course, on the, uh, on the IT landscape itself. Uh, we decided to go uh, to a step-by-step -step transformation because these big banks is a high-risk stuff, so we say, no, we want to go the way step-by-step -step transforming our systems. Um, we have to reduce the running cost of our system, finding new way of, of license models or introduce another um, uh, software models. Also, we want to do is modernization of our backend, so we are able to, to change the backend with for to another with another one without affecting too much the, 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 the whole system. One of the success, successful key is also the, the, commission, the commissioning of <laughs> legacy systems. Yeah? So we have to stop building a new stack parallel in parallel in parallel. So we have also to be able, if you introduce a new stack, if you introduce new technology, we have to, we have to be able to the commercial le uh, legacy system. Also, one very important thing is uh, that one, we want to expose our business logic or team from open APIs. It's a telecommunication standard so that, that we are able to share services over the countries. And the, least, uh, the last one is to decouple, and main uh, introduction is to decouple completely the fronts from the backends. And this brings me to the second part of the presentation, and I will hang over to Vladimir. Thank you, Paolo. Thanks. So before I start with my part, uh, I would like to ask you, who has ever dealt with a such thing as a micro front end? And so very less people around? OK, great. So micro front end, for those who never heard that buzzword, is a kind of idea of microservices brought to the front end. So small modular parts, uh, which enables uh, to build a more complex web front end. Usually it's a web technique uh, and allowing a kind of collaboration between the teams because the micro front end idea is also to decouple not uh, just a technique, but also um, a teams allow to de develop pieces and put them together in a, in a broader context. And this is the main part of the, our uh, front-end transformation strategy. As you heard before, uh, we are kind of not a startup company anymore, <laughs> and we have a bunch of applications we're dealing with, and behind them, there are a bunch of teams using and developing those applications. And each, each of those teams usually loves their own application. Yeah? And this, this combination between wish to harmonize and transform on one side and having a bunch of teams, everybody loves his own, is a, is, a, is a constant fight in the, in the larger companies as ours. Uh, in order to, to achieve this balance between uh, transformation and gathering and putting those teams together to work on a common higher goal, uh, in the user interface area or front end area, we, we put a, uh, we, we are using a, on the one side micro front end technology and run it in the cloud, on the private cloud platform. So combination between micro front-end architecture and cloud solution is a key success factor of this, of this idea. Uh, so what we are introducing is we are introduced a kind of platform where we build, build the dynamic web desktops based on small applications. We call them, in the context in our platform, we call them widgets. Widget is also a very 
meanwhile very used name in various contexts, but we, we define it here for ourselves as the smallest atomic piece of software built by a dedicated developer or development team. So developer starts and builds a widget on his own PC without knowing any context around and following a very, very small set of rules. And the following the small set of rules, or as much as less rules as possible, drives us to the second principle of the idea, and this is autonomy. So all those guys who are developing in their own systems, they are do it usually in an autonomous way. They do it, they don't, they don't uh, need to discuss the ideas or frameworks or whatever with the other teams because they, they have their own area of control. And this autonomy is the, the key of the idea what we are also trying to establish here. We don't want to enforce to those guys, those teams uh, which are developing pieces to follow some framework principles or to, f to discuss uh, about what are kind of logging uh, frameworks are used, but allow them as much as possible to, to do their own thing. Uh, ideally, those front-end pieces are built by those teams which are also having a knowledge in a domain uh, where they're coming from. For example, if you have a kind of customer management system in behind and you build a piece of software, a widget, which searches for the customer data, you would maybe ideally put those responsibility to, put, to build it by those guys and not by the guys who are building a selling front end because they don't have knowledge about customer information, for example. Other way around, if the team is building a kind of uh, web shop basket as a widget, uh, those, you wouldn't put those into to the guys who are dealing with, uh, I don't know, workforce management or whatever. Having those small pieces of software, those widgets, is a one side of the story, but how to compose them to the higher products, to higher level products. And for that, we, we introduced uh, the idea of desktops, so desktops applications which are composing those widgets to the higher level uh, features and allow to the user to, 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 to fulfill more complex processes. In the CRM area, I don't know if, if a CRM is a word for you, but in the CRM area there is a buzzword also 360 degree view. So all the CRM systems around Salesforce is a good example, has a 360 degree view desktop, yeah, and you could imagine this could be a potential desktop for the, what I'm talking about. So this, this desktop is, is, is consists of the very, very big number of small widgets which are basically composed just and deployed only on the desktop for the, for the, for the first time. And, of course, since we are a large company with a very big, uh, with the various business units, we want to allow to build a various desktops for various user groups. So there is, I don't know, accounting user group or legal user group, first line call center user group, etc. And all those user groups will have their own desktops. So this is one part of the story, but the second part of the story is how to transform it. So we introduce a new system and say, oh, this is a very new fancy stuff. Please, everybody use it and forget the old legacy systems. How many? Thousand? Okay. Will be hard. So the way how to go from the legacy to the new is the, the, the crucial part, how to transform. So the way is the goal. And what we are also trying to do is we are trying to enable those developers when they build the widgets put them back to their own legacy frontends, to retrofit them. There is a, in a mob, uh, automobile industry, the, the, the word is retrofitting, yeah? So you use, you stop the invests in the legacy or minimize them, but allow the changes there. How to do that? And the, our, our answer on this is uh, you build the new widgets and put them back to the legacy frontends. For that, in order to achieve this, we have various strategies. One is you call it by external URL, very, very simple one. Second would be put a seamless, integrated seamlessly into the application with the application's old look and feel and styles. Even 
we, 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 put, uh, we, we deploy a, a separate runtime. We package, for example, Chromium Embedded Framework as a part of an old application and execute their uh, new widgets. Also, we allow very uh, smooth communication between those uh, applications, between the old and the new one, for example, through, through a server-side messaging bus using MQTT standard as a sample. This is how our up, up runtime and deployment architecture simplified looks like. So we, we allow, we start from the code, developer teams are developing code, they push it to, for example, to Git. We collect the code, build Docker images. Docker image, the every widget, and this is important aspect of the idea, is, is a small, every image is a Docker, every, every widget is a Docker image which is pushed to the, to the Docker repository and after that deployed to the Kubernetes cluster. In the Kubernetes cluster we have then, I don't know, 50, 100, maybe 1,000 in next year's widgets and all of them are collected and, and, and composed into the desktops. The, piece of com the crucial part of software is our portal, which is dynamically loading and, uh, and discovering the widgets and uh, allowing the, the, uh, uh, the big portion of infrastructure communications, for example, security, uh, metrics, logging, tracing, etc. So all those stuff which are usually developed by every stack again and again uh, are part of a portal infrastructure. We are also able to integrate a third party like BFF that is a, a third party widget not running in our cluster but somewhere else in the company is an is a seamless widget on the on the on the desktop. So how looks a single widget? I said on the beginning, uh, for every widget we have one Git repo. Every widget has two runtimes: client app written in usually React or Vue or whatever JavaScript frameworks the team would 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 like to use, with a minimal set of rules, and. The, every widget has its own backend for frontend. There is a term BFF there, not best friends forever. <laughs> we are best friends forever, but... And uh, also maybe, for example, written in the Node.js. And when the developer develops its widget, he can do it on his own PC without collaborating to other environment. He, what he needs to do is only to take care that the backends, which are called from the BFFs, are provided, for example, as a mocked mock server on his PC, and he can develop, make tests, etc., in a separate and autonomous way. On the end of the way, we, we package it as a Docker container and, uh, and push it to the, to the Kubernetes. So this is our s uh, landscape or tool chain we are, we are using on. We are using a private cloud Kubernetes. We have a portal as a mushroom server. This is an open source project. We prefer React. Uh, because of memory footprint, but can implement other UI frameworks. Use Selenium Suppress, logging, tracing, FX stack, you know, all those stuff usually being used in meanwhile. Prometheus and Grafana for monitoring, and so on and so on. So, at the end of the day, what is the driving, the driving forces you heard from Pablo? But we are in a complex and heterogeneous environment, so we need to take care about technology, and we cannot introduce it without taking care about teams who are using it. And we cannot say, okay, here are the new technology used by the new team and all teams, I don't care, please go and uh, don't do anything else except keeping the household. Yeah? Scalability, very, very uh, important fact. Scalability through autonomy. Kubernetes, Docker, and micro frontends allow as this scalability, this autonomy, in order to achieve scalability. And on the end, if we need to transform, and we do need it, we do not want to do it as a separate project. We, we, we want to, or we embed it always into the business projects and try to find the ways what can be modernized in the, as a part of the business projects. So, thank you for your attention. And thank you. if you have any questions. Uh, yes, we, we have, a couple, <laughs> we have a couple of questions in Slido, and we have 10 minutes, so if you feel, feel free to ask, uh, ask some more questions, uh, and we'll be answering those that 
appeared already. Thank you. Uh, so the first question, and I like this one because it's a tester question. So it's micro front end platform. How do you make sure that all parts are integrated and that updates don't introduce bugs and regressions? So there are vario various levels of, of, of testing. So the first test is, a, as, a, as in testing pyramid we know, uh, is a very, very low level, highly automated unit test. So we have a sandbox there where we execute the tests uh, on a specific widget level using a mock server, for example. Uh, on the highest level of the testing, we are ensuring it through the rollout processes. Thanks to, thanks to Kubernetes, we have a green-blue deployment. So we have always uh, multiple versions in production. And we will be able to recognize uh, the, the problems without affecting the business uh, 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 when rollouting this. So, and, and between those two steps, we have also multiple stages where we test. Right, thank you. Uh, so with the next, next question from Alois, uh, how do you manage different versions of the same library? At the end, they're running all in client browser together. So how is that So done? We, we have multiple widgets. We have always in the browser one JavaScript application, uh, one widget in a, one version at a time. But, uh, in the browser runtime, we have multiple widgets at the same time. So uh, from the perspective of widgets, therefore, means we have only one version there. And yes, in the desktop, we have, I don't know, 50 widgets with those 50 versions. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, on all those testing stages before, there was a kind of testing run done that where those 50 widgets in their own versions are tested if they work together. Hope that was an answer. Hopefully question. as well. If not, I'm sure that yeah. they'll, they'll reach you. Uh, all right, uh, coming to the next questions. Uh, obviously, having a lot of experience in these areas, so are there any good open source libraries to uh, implement micro front ends? So as I, we started from the very beginning, we are not, we are not using a very, uh, ver any, any specific micro front end centric libraries. The, the main idea is here to, to get to people who have done similar things in the past, yeah? so don't do it from scratch without knowing what you're doing, but it's like in every development project. Uh, second step is uh, you should, you should th there is no kind of micro front end w things there. The JavaScript allows you that, yeah? because it's, it is small, yes? And if you build it as a, as a, as a uh, uh, big one library and big one applications, uh, you, you, you did your job uh, wrong if you build a micro front end or, or not. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, so this comp componentizing co concept of building a JavaScript at all is a just a consequent uh, idea what you what, when you when you build a micro front end. This is nothing. Uh, there is no big magic behind it. The bigger magic is, in my opinion, is how to bring all those teams work together. And this is a this is a hard part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so maybe elaborating on that on that uh, no, answer. No iframes. If you <laughs> use iframes, so no, no, not no, I, no as, as as less as possible, yeah. But ideally, no. So all those JavaScript are just in the between the div HTML elements and the ex the, the browser recognize them as a one big JavaScript. All right, and uh, maybe elaborating on that a little more. Yeah. So how many widgets typically work on one page and how what is the overhead of so multiple currently we have a currently we have a uh, uh, currently we have a I don't know 10 12 widgets up to 10 12 widgets mm -hmm. will be usual the case and uh, if you one one very important aspect is that every widget has a very has to have a very small footprint. So we have guys who knows and who who looks to the to the things what are there. Usually, some developers would like to bring I don't know some table JavaScript front uh, framework and put it into their widget. Then we have a discussions there and say, okay, could is it really needed a big table front uh, JavaScript framework to embed it there, or can we use a can we just bring, build with React a small component that fulfills your needs? Mm -hmm. And we end up on that area. So basically, React is a very good um, uh, UI framework that supports uh, this, this small footprint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All 
All right, I guess we answered the question about iframes. Uh, there's another question which is probably asking for maybe elaborating more on what is, <laughs> what is <laughs> using <laughs> COBOL. You said it, you said it. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> what is using COBOL? COBOL, well, um, it was such an example to uh, really bring in, 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 in place that we are having a lot of technologies in place and all uh, old technologies. So we also have people who has to have the, the, the um, experience making some changes in, in, in really old uh, uh, programming languages and systems. As far as I can remember, there was one billing system <laughs> in our company. We have multiples, and uh, the rating engine was there written in COBOL. Yeah. But so I don't know if it's that. But there are applications still running with, yeah. this, with this technology, yeah. so we have to keep it alive. All right. Mm -hmm. So maybe mm, last two questions. The one with top votes at the moment is how many developers and how many development teams A A1 has in-house? So well, in-house, we, we don't have a lot of developers <laughs> which are really, really sitting in-house. We have ma many developers as a partners. Uh, we are working for uh, various periods of times in our company, and I would say uh, uh, many hundreds, yeah? So, oh, so. so many hundreds of developers in so. the sum, yeah? I am going to pick a question with uh, 10 volts, actually, so that's, that's the top one, because I think you already described what does BFF do. Yeah. But uh, next, next question would be, uh, what if multiple parts use similar functionality? So do you yes, this repeat is a very good yourself? Question, yeah? The micro, micro, micro X con concept, there are various understandings what is a micro front end or micro service. Yeah? Some people say micro service is a piece of software which I deploy multiple times so in, in order to scale. Uh, this is a kind of scalability perspective of micro front and microservice, uh, or especially for microservice. Uh, some other people uh, would say microservice is a kind of modularization of a system where, uh, where I uh, let all those things collaborate together. Uh, there is also investment view of microservice. Yeah? We call it throwaway software. Yeah? If, if you develop a piece of software, usually what the people do when you, when you renew it, they refactor and refactor and refactor. And some point of time, the so software is so valuable that you cannot throw it away, but you need to refactor it. And the costs of refactoring are rising and rising. Micro front-end and microservice perspective from the investment view is uh, something where the dry principle is basically uh, we don't care. We, we build a piece of software, let's say for 5,000 euros, and we, we hold it there, but we don't refactor it. We build the next one for the next 3,000 euros. So this is a very important aspect of micro front and microservice architecture, usually not being uh, seen from the investment perspective. Yeah. All right, so thank you again for sharing your story yeah. and for your presentation. Uh, please give yeah. a round of applause to Vladimir Mishevich and Pablo Thanks. Kuber. Thank you a lot.